back in episode 44 we had a look at the National Envy M1 in that same video we also looked at the National Envy M3 then in episode 61 we looked at the Envy M5 today another 20 or so videos later we're going to be looking at the Panasonic now it's no longer National it's Panasonic NV M7 there are two of those here I don't know what whether they work or not we'll find that out uh, what their status is they're just here they've been sitting here I've never looked inside one that's dented so we'll try them out then we'll take one of them apart and see what's going on inside it and we'll have a look how that compares to the NVM5. I suspect they'll be fairly similar, but uh, let's find out. That one there looks quite a bit crusty. It's got lots of eye juice there, full of eye juice. Okay, I've got the power supply, or a, a power supply, the same sort of power supply that comes with all of those cameras. So we'll get that hooked up, and we'll see if we can get something out of these. I forgot I had this nice power strip. Convenient power. And it's got these energy saving indicators. Because it's just a little orange flap which comes into view when you press the button. Power saving. Not wasting power with neons. Let's have a look at what this camera It takes the same battery as we saw in the M5. It's got the same power adapter. Fairly similar controls there various camera functions that it can do power switch is up here there's a standby there I guess this will have the same piezo autofocus and it's got some extra controls under here for counter and on-screen clock tracking buttons then there's this thing which puts it to record mode or playback mode takes VHS tapes viewfinder connected by this cable external microphone gain setting microphone there viewfinder which swings out lens the white balance thing all right well let's turn this on this is the better looking one oh it's a bit dodgy though that casing's not clipped together properly there i wonder if someone's been in this tape stuck in this one maybe this one's got problems okay that's not very promising that's what you see uh, yeah so I guess that's in poor shape hmm that's a shame it does object All right then let's try the other one so that it looks pretty similar to other cameras we've tried where they have bad capacitor leaking. Oh, I should have looked on the viewfinder. Yeah, that doesn't look much better, does it? I think there's something wrong with my capture settings. Nope, set to composite input. Oh, the tape comes out. Oh, that... oh look. It goes now. Huh, okay. Now that tape's seen better days, hasn't it? Got a back coating, EHQ, the enhanced headquarters. But yeah, I think this has been a bit damp. Got mold growth. Yeah, the viewfinder's lit up. Power zoom's not functioning. Hmm. That fell out of it. The white balance is a bit off, isn't it? Set it to auto. There you go. Oh, look at that going crusty. I wonder if my power supply, if this power supply I'm using is on its last legs. That's possible, isn't it, since it was dodgy for both of them. Hmm, doesn't go into standby. I wonder if that's, if it needs the tape operating for that. Oh, doesn't sound the best, does it? Didn't chew it or lose it. Interesting. Yeah, uh, perhaps I'll grab another power supply and we'll try it, just in case it's the power supply that's dodgy here and not giving a clean voltage to the camera. Another adapter. Same sort of thing. 
This is the M7 one, okay. So, there you go, it's the actual one. It's got a weird plug on it. Now, this one here that we're using right now is the M11. The one that would come with an M1. So it's the same thing every time, but they just put a model number on it for sort of matches adaptive for M1 that matches the camera model. Although they do change this front bit because that one can take those batteries that the M1 and M3 take. Whereas that one is just covered over and you have to charge the batteries by plugging them in with an adapter. Anyway, let's see if this one will power up. this good thing. Yes, it powered up. I think that's ever been unwrapped. Probably. Yeah. This looks quite cleanly rolled up for something that should be 20 or whatever years old. Yeah, it seems pretty similar, doesn't it? So maybe it wasn't the power supply that's the problem. Unless they're all dead, which... It wouldn't be surprising, would it? Oh, let's see if there's something on this tape. I think it's just an empty tape. I could try recording on it. Let's put it on the counter. Oh, it probably only comes up in there. Yeah. So it is recording. Is it? No, I don't think it's recording. Now it's recording. And yeah, it's struggling a bit, isn't it? We didn't record enough to actually matter. It kind of looked like it had something on it, didn't it? I wonder if this is new enough that it's got the capacitor problem that all cameras around the 90s had. I don't know exactly what the date is on this. Yeah, I think we've wrecked it now, the belt slipped. Alright, we're taking apart this one because the tape's now stuck in it. Let's just check this one again just for fun. I think it's unhappy as well. Oh well. Let's get into this thing and see what we can find. Usually the viewfinder unclips is a uh, something to push. That means it will slide all the way off. Yes, there's a little tag there to push in. And then it slides all the way off. That probably is the same as what we saw on the M5. I have the bits from the M5 right here so that we can study it and compare them. That's the M5 viewfinder. Interesting that it has a part number label, but this one doesn't. They are slightly different in shape. The lead on that one is pretty crusty. See, the branding is different. Anyway, we can take those apart and compare them. Remember the construction of M5 being a bit dodgy, not as nice as the older cameras for ease of taking it apart for servicing. Because of the where the battery's mounted in there, it causes quite a bit of mess. Is that still threaded? No, it's ready to eject. It's just going to be the belt slipping. There's a little cover there, I wonder if that's a memory backup battery or similar. Let's see. Yeah, some kind of little battery there. Oh, it's quite a thin one. Okay. That must be for the date and time, so you can set that once and then hopefully not set it for a while. These are self-tapper screws. Okay. What else is going on down here? That shape there seems different. To what we had on the other one, the M5. Now oh, there's a screw there, we have to take this lens hood thing off. There's some tiny screws there, I'm not sure if they're involved in taking it apart, they look more like holding that board together in place. Microphone comes off, unplugs, clip there. Oh, look at that, there's a screw there. Oh, there's a screw there. On the back, there's a screw. 
They must be coming near the end of screws. Oh, that's a long one. Here we go. And if you find a bracket's come out. Now look at that. Oh, that looks quite a bit more modern, doesn't it? Now there's a plug for that, but it's not for that. That must be the zoom lever, and that one there must be the the VTR start stop buttons. Okay, we've got a camera thing. What do we need to do to take the other side off? Oh yeah, there's some clips. Okay, that kind of plugs over the bear. So now that side is free. And then there's some controls hooked up here. Different number of ways connectors, good, so that you don't get that mixed up. Now look at that. Bits of here and all sorts of exciting things. Quite a lot of it is the battery. That board there looks quite bent. Very thin board. It also looks like it folds down. Ah, but there's the controls on the top. Now there's some screen there, but it's been ripped. Did it happen when I was taking it apart, or was it like that to start with? Weird. Okay. Alright. That's controls for the camera section for doing all those special effects. Is that the only thing joining up the camera section? Could be. That's the viewfinder there with the viewfinder plug. And it's pretty flimsy, but there's some red screws there. Guess that will take off the whole camera section. Let's try that. Uh, if the ribbon cable is a bit in the way. Oh, look at that. Okay, so the only thing hooking up, that's the viewfinder cable. But the only thing joining the camera part to the VCR section is that flex cable there. Oh yeah. Is that side easier to undo or this side? Maybe that side. As long as we remember which way around it goes. Okay, there's the camera part. There are red screws there. Take this bracket off. I guess so the zoom didn't work. Power zoom. Oh, that sensor. Okay. But looking at that, the zoom motor there, it's a direct drive one where the gearbox is straight on the end of the motor, not a belt driven like we'd seen in other cameras and the belt just completely disintegrates. That is a direct drive one, so that should have still worked. Maybe the power supply fault that we presume this camera has is the problem. Yeah, that's rough, isn't it? Oh, I think the focus motor, that one there, has got some issue. It's that is skipping, and the shaft coming out of it, it's got that white bit on it, shifts. Also, all the, the foam dust stuff that's come off of the microphone has landed in there. Yeah, something's messed up with that gearbox. Look at that. There's extra teeth there. I think it's snapped off. I don't think so. It seems to be normal, original. There's also a ring, see, which is inserted in there and then hooked in at the ends. Yeah, look at that. It's come off. That's interesting. This is quite dusty. Oh, and there's also a thing so it can tell where the lens is turned to. Interlocking there to hold those boards together. They're really thin boards. 
and double-sided plated through. Okay, that's pretty interesting. And a bit damaged. And the lens doesn't look in that good shape either. There's some, and you can see around there, it's got mildew or something happening in it. So I guess this camera has been sitting with that tape in it in some humid place going mouldy for a while. Oh well. Now this, interesting that it has a red screw there. Does that mean you, oh, there's two. You can get the whole battery assembly out of the way quite easily perhaps. Let's try it. I remember this being a fiddle in the M5. Maybe I should have refreshed myself on that video before starting this one, but I remember it was quite a, a lot of fiddling around in that area. No, it's not that easy. It's all stuck to all this other stuff around here. Yeah, and the trick was you had to pull that straight out. I remember spending a long time trying to work out how to get that handle off, and it turned out to be easy. Or maybe it's different in this one. Oh yeah, that's right, the eject button didn't work on the other one, wasn't it? That's what the problem was it had. Yeah, something surprising like the tap switch wasn't working. So by shorting the contacts out, you could get the tape to eject. Yeah, I think this is different. Quite a bit different. Look at those tiny little screws there, those little dome head type version of those. Well, even that's a small one. Now, yeah, will that just fold out now? Uh, record prevention switch. Huh. That's pretty nice and tidy, isn't it? But that came out a lot easier than I remembered from the M5, so maybe they did quite a bit of improvement to the design there. There's some grass stuck onto the back side of that cable. A grass seed or something? Ah uh, yes, and there's grease. I have a cloth around here. Great. So the bit we'd need to get to to manually eject it is this here. I don't remember which direction to turn it in. So we could just turn it on like that and poke it, couldn't we? Might as well, just for fun. Yeah, so it was actually the capstan, the belt from the capstan to the idler for the take-up that wasn't moving, not the loading belt. Oh yeah, so that's flashing because it's not in, um, because the record prevention switch is not connected. Okay, perhaps we should test it again now that the, the camera part is not connected. Alright, let's uh, wipe my fingers first and we try it. Alright, let's see what this does. I haven't got the video cable plugged in. Oh no, it drew this big lump of hairy fluff into it. Alright, let's plug in the cable so we can actually see the signal that's coming out. And then we'll try it. Oh no, what's happened? Did mold or something get in there? The head doesn't look all that good. I think because some of all that fluff that was at the bottom got trapped. Oh, but there's also yeah, mold on the tape. We get rid of that tape then. And we'll try another test tape. Uh, we should probably clean everything. It's going to be dirty and bad, isn't it? Oh, well, look at that. I'm moving the tracking over. You get a black and white picture. Okay, so it sort of works. I don't know why it's not in colour. Oh, that tape runs a lot better than the other one, doesn't it? It can actually rewind and fast forward. Look at that. Rewind works. Fast forward works. Yeah, I think the mouldy tape is all stuck, because it's not making that weird clicking noise either. Let's just try that mould tape again, just fast forward it for a bit, 
and see if it gets stuck. I'm guessing the, you know, the mold is gluing it together now. Oh, it does move a little bit. I think that noise is it peeling itself off the reel. Don't play moldy tapes. It's just snow. You know, I'm guessing that tape was never actually used. Oh, maybe because we've warmed it up a bit, it started working. The belts warmed up a bit and started gripping. There's a chance that this machine's been hardly ever used. You know, people buy video cameras with good intentions and then they just put it in a cupboard and never use it. Or we'll use it once and then... It gets put away and then never used again. So this might scrub up to be a good machine. Yeah, There's definitely something going on on the tape on the head though. It's like some ink is on there. You can feel the head protrusion. It's not that. But what is that? I guess I'm touching it on some... Oh, is it... oh I think it's the part number of the drum. That's what it is. Okay. That's not coming off the head. That... There's a part number there, printed on the side of the stationary part, which I'm accidentally wiping off. Okay. That's more normal. And the capstan's pretty gross and dirty as well. Back tension band, tape, loading guides. Ah, uh, the pinch roll is also a bit crusty. Okay, so this is a well-used, sort of well-used machine. Okay. Good, that will dry out in no time. Oh, it's making that sound again. I guess it's not that good after all. I wonder why that stopped. Still black and white. Back tension. Anyway. So it's generally functioning, just the chroma is missing. Alright. Let's compare this to the M5, just to see what's there, what's different. I'm wondering if we can get that battery housing thing off easily. Alright, we'll compare to the M5 and see what's different. Let's start with the camera. So this is an M5 camera, and that's M7. So it's become more compact. Interesting, I was expect thinking that they'd be quite similar, but they're not, they're quite different. Yeah, that bracket thing is different too for that sensor. This one's more self-contained, whereas that one it went away on with all this other housing business. So the iris controls up there, and then it's got the two motors on the bottom, and the belt-driven ones, you can see the belt there. So I guess there was an innovation and they changed to these direct driven motors with no belts. And yeah, the positioning of them is different. The iris motors deep in there, kind of connected to that. Uh, okay, so it was a more normal cable to join the camera part to the rest of the VCR. There is that's been changed to a thin ribbon cable. Similar number of pins. Oh, I think you might have to take that one off first because it pushes onto connectors. Push onto there, onto there, and then there's that hooked in board. I want to take the focus motor off. I thought we were doing a comparison. Okay, we're doing this as well. Let's take off the focus motor and see what gives. Yeah, it's it's wrecked. See, it spins freely and then it grabs every now and then on something in there so that yeah is no good guess the gears and that stripped out that's pretty weird isn't it not seen something like that before it's usually just the belt slit oh that just pops slides off easily i don't know if there's any will the let's see oh yeah i was gonna say i didn't think you could get the gearbox apart but it's a part. It's really a part. Ready? It looks like the teeth have snapped off. 
Should be zoomed in for this, shouldn't we? There, on that gear, there's a whole pile of mush around that darker coloured one. Yeah, that one there, the lower part, has lost its teeth, and the location of them now is on there. You can see them sitting on that gear there like little ants, which used to be around that. So, yeah, that's had it. Sad? I don't know why that happened. Because normally you can't back drive these gearboxes because they've got a little clutch thing on them. You see on the output shaft there's two little felt discs and that's compressed with the spring against the motor output pulley. So if you're applying too much force to it, it will just slip there in those felt. Maybe that's jammed. Okay, so it has got a, a flat on the shaft. Yeah, I think that might have jammed up. The little clutch thing appears to be full of glue or something. Maybe, yeah, you know, that must be why the motor got wrecked, because if you pull on the zoom lever and this um, clutch thing doesn't slip, then you'll end up munting it, because you apply a lot of force to the little gearbox. Yeah, well, there you go, that's what's happened to that. Been rough handled. Okay, that's the iris thing. Well, yeah, I did look into how the iris motor things work, and it's two coils, one's driven, and then the other one is a feedback or dampening coil, which provides a velocity or movement signal back to the little control amplifier thing that's driving it so that as it starts moving faster it tells it that it's moving fast and so it stops pushing as hard so it gets a controlled like very well damped movement because it starts pushing hard and then as soon as it starts moving it dials back a bit so the motion ends up self smoothing so that's yeah that's how those things work a drive and a feedback yeah, so this is pretty different. It's got two main boards and then the one back piece which is in this shielded enclosure for the CCD and related bits and pieces. Yeah, it's all stuck together. Whereas this one, the older one, the M5, that's got plenty of boards. It's got these two big ones and then it's got another one there, another one there. And then it's got the CCD stuff in there, and then another thing in a metal box there, and then there's another board down there. So they really have miniaturized or integratedized things in this model. So that's pretty interesting. That so it has advanced a fair bit, probably more than what it did between M1 and M3, because really that was just adding autofocus and a couple of other little bits and pieces, but you know, not as major change in the whole design as this has been. Okay, so it's got a board, but that's not the one that the sensor is mounted on. But it's got a ribbon, a ribbon coming off of it, and then, yeah, the sensor board, sensors down in there, under some layers. Oh yeah, I guess this will have a frosty IR filter as well, won't it? I guess we can have a look at that. Let's see, we'll get down in there. Frosted over IR filter. I don't think I have any more to replace them with because I already put that extra one that I had in whatever other camera that was with that in the M1 maybe. Put it in there. Uh, it's still stuck by the... Okay, well there's the sensor. Ah, look at that. The sensor is mounted on the piezo element now. That's different to before, isn't it? Because before... Oh no, I think it's the same. Yeah. Mm. Wasn't there a lens mounted in the piezo thing before? Pretty sure it's that disc there. Pretty sure that was a lens anyway. You have to go and watch the other video of the M5 to find out. Cario's flapping around because they keep getting in the way of the camera. The IR filter is clean. Doesn't seem to have that problem. And the image sensor is mounted on piezo. Okay, well, that's quite exciting. Well, it's good that the IR filter is in a good condition. So that cable there, pink and brown wire, 
is the one that drives the piezo element. Just put a bit of this stuff back together. Then we'll take a look at the mechanical part and the other boards. See what that looks like compared to the other one. The older one. Oh yeah, I'm probably going to change the microphone setup at some point too to try and get rid of more background noise and improve the noise floor. Yeah, I need to do some experiments. We'll see what happens there. Uh, yep, so that was these ones. Is it good to watch all the tedious assembly and disassembly, or do you just want to see the the result, the end, the bits once they're all taken out? I don't even know how much of the assembling and disassembling and screwing and unscrewing to include in the final edit. Okay, just put this shield back on and then we'll move on. Okay, there's the camera because it's much more compact and more integrated than the other one so that is interesting all right this is the mechanical bits from the m5 it's fairly dismantled ah the input adapter multi-pin connector it was down here on the m5 but it's moved up on the m7 okay we did get that stripped down to the same shaped thing you can see it uses the text switches that have LEDs in the center of them whereas this one it's just the basic ones and LEDs next to the switches this is much fancier isn't it? light up buttons there's the board so how similar is this? not similar at all uh, it would be good if we can get all this other stuff out of the way just so we can have a proper look at it ah oh, look here we go Screws somewhere down here, isn't there? So there's the battery housing coming out, but there's some stuff attached. Now we have to cut off a cable tie to free the wires that come from the battery connector and those clock, that clock battery cable. So that's what's going to come out. ground wire there uh, yeah there's a grounding assembly there now there was a ground wire under here I thought we should probably maintain that so that it doesn't accidentally short out on something else now we can have a look at the guts ah look at that the head motor it's changed to a more high density a ribbon that is shielded wires coming out for the video signal that's now changed to a shielded flexible board goes into there so this is complete boards are completely different that's got soldered in hybrid module things with surface mount stuff on them whereas this it seems they've just put more of it on the actual board Toshiba chip the same now that thing there different part numbers I guess that's some sort of CPU thing this motor driver that we cap stand motor driver comes down to there that be a 6430s that's the same part number there it's just in a different position that there looks like the audio circuit that's there the same this had another board there that's audio as well oh that's power there power not audio yeah, so the audio is up there on the mic whereas it's not on this see they've moved all that away and so the audio is now all integrated onto this main board oh yes it looks like that part there yes it says audio and yeah, so that's luminance there color there the audio the servo the system control and the power all nicely integrated so apart from that has this changed much well the head is a lot slimmer now it's using 
a more compact motor, so that's deeper than that. That's got a bigger motor in it. The capstan motor is probably the same. The loading motors and gears assembly looks pretty similar. And yeah, that's the same there. Mode switch, same. Wire going to the LED for the end sensors looks the same. And I guess that's where the camera plugged in on that one. I think so, it looks like the right number of pins and how long the wire is coming off the camera assembly. There's this one, it's right on the edge there. And this is NEC manufactured board. And that's the same here. It has NEC on it. Now let's check, check on the other side. What have we got here? Ah, we've changed to a plastic thrust bearing thing for the capstan. That's cheaping out, isn't it? And also here, metal guide rail for the, the tape guide, the rail that slides along. Changed to plastic here, so it's more cheaping out. And the moulding has changed a bit there. There's some like ground down surfaces there, which don't exist on this one, unless that's one of them. Ah, the end bits that receive the tape guides metal or cast alloy stuff whereas it's plastic there that one's still metal the weight feels about the same i guess they're trying to lower the weight of it by changing stuff to plastic sometimes that has a bad effect of unreliable stuff cracks and breaks and the head is definitely a much newer design that head is wrecked it's very dirty look at that thing Sure what that is. It's a soft eject device down there which is a governor type thing. Where's this one? That's over there now. That will be a thing that's a pulley in some thick grease which makes it difficult to turn so that will make the eject softer. There's this one, it's down there. That little thing there. Well, so that's a look inside a Panasonic NV-M7 VHS movie video camera and a comparison between the previous model NV-M5 and there's some quite interesting differences that were unexpected so they have done a fair bit of work to miniaturize and integrate uh, the various bits and pieces final thing, let's take a look in the viewfinder see if that's got anything interesting going on in it then, in some weeks or months, we'll do the final video in this series. Unless we try to repair on the colour of that. I don't know, I might have a look at that. Depends. But anyway, the final video will be a teardown and investigation of the NVMS1. I've got one of those sitting over there. So that's, I think it's based on the M7, I'm not sure. We'll find out though, but it's an SVHS version, so it gives you. Yeah, I'm guessing there's places on the board where the SVHS circuitries would go, but we'll find out. Oh, look at that! It's ground itself away to a dust. So here's the viewfinder board. Yeah, it's got the the usual one of those things, isn't it? 2510S. Yep, the 2510S chip is the one that was used in the M3 viewfinder and presumably M1 as well. That's the sync separator and deflection driving IC. And then so that does most of the, the heavy lifting. Then there's, yeah, it's got the service mount, there's probably that. Drives the flyback and then and the other deflection. And then there's some high voltage stuff going on there which they've wrapped the input cable around the high voltage wires, which is these two various grids and things. Yeah, because that, there's a deep recess there, focus brightness. Focus brightness. And, yeah, that goes to those. Well, they've labelled it, look at that, grid 3, grid 2. Looks like it could have had a tally light on it as well. Yeah, that connector would have been one extra pin if that was the case. Don't wonder what that is. Um, usually, be a power and a ground, a video, 
might be two, another power supply. And then it will have horizontal and vertical sync pulses coming out of it. And I don't know what the other wire is. Because that does sync separation, so it can provide H and V sync pulses. And then that gets used by the, the character generator on the board to make the little on-screen display stuff that's then synchronized to the video. And there's a little CRT there. Not sure what keeps this thing shut. It's probably just clicked together, clicked, snapped, popped together. Very lacking in screws, which is not very nice if you want to take it apart and not destroy it in the process. Okay, well there's the mirror. Kind of, oh, it's just a piece of metal. Okay, it's not actually a, a glass mirror. It's a it's a bit of highly polished. Don't know what it is stainless or something. That's weird. They're normally mirrors. More cost cutting, isn't it? Anyway, there's the front of the picture tube. Well, it'll be a round one. It's just squeezed into this little housing thing. Yeah, look at that. There's the front of the picture tube. It's all round. Mono CRT. Flat tube pay extra for that. So there you go, that concludes the teardown investigation comparison of the Panasonic NVM7 VHS video camera with a flying erase head. Probably that. The one that's between because there's four regular heads for the video, that switch. And then that one that's in the middle. And Interestingly, it's got a capacitor, is it? Well, it says resistor R2 across the signal. Anyway, there you go. Panasonic NVM7 for the 20th time. Hopefully that was interesting. And stay tuned because we're going to look at the MS1 eventually. And along the way leading up to that and after that there'll be all sorts of others. Other interesting cameras and things to look at. And VCRs. Heaps of VCRs. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Yeah. Didn't go back. Didn't click in. Yeah, that's a shame. Sort of works. There we go. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, like vision correction lens thing in there. Anyway, there you go. Panasonic NVM7 video camera. With mold and mildew and things in it.